Welcome back, ladies and gentlemen. Today we're going to talk about section 10.6, segment lengths in circles. So previously we had talked about all the different interactions you could get with two lines intersecting a circle, and we talked about the angle measurements of all those situations. Today we're going to talk about same thing, two lines intersecting a circle in some manner, and being able to calculate segment lengths. On the screen, you'll see your exit question for the day, which really isn't an exit question. It's just a little heads up that I'm going to give you a quiz on this material in class tomorrow, because that's the easiest way to do it. Let's start with a little vocab. Segments of a chord. Segments of a chord are simply segments that a chord got chopped into by being intersected by some other line. They use those that phrase in the theorems quite a lot, so it's good to know. The other phrases that they'll use in the theorems today, uh, and you might want to do this, draw this drawing just so you know this vocab, uh, external segment, which is a secant line, but just the external part of the secant line, uh, in fact, just a, an external segment of it, and then a tangent segment, which seems pretty obvious going from a vertex of an angle to the point of tangency, uh, and then the secant segment itself is not talking about the entire secant line, which would continue on forever in both directions, but the secant segment would just be that uh, segment of it that goes from the intersection to the far edge of the circle. Okay, in the previous lesson, we talked about situations where we were measuring angles, and there were uh, only a limited number of situations where that angle location could be. It could be outside the circle, inside the circle, or on the circle. And likewise, when we talk about segment lengths and finding every combination of what could happen in terms of intersecting a circle with two lines, you only have a number of different combinations that can happen. Um, or at least these are the only ones that we're going to talk about. So we have a situation where we have two chords intersecting inside of circle. We have a situation where we have a tangent and a secant intersecting outside of a circle. We have a situation where the intersection is again outside the circle, but this time with two secant lines, and again outside the circle, but with two tangent lines instead of just one tangent line. Now, we'll go back to Sesame Street, because this does really look like which one of these things doesn't belong. We've already dealt with one of these situations. Pause the video and see if you can remember which one you already know the answer to. You already know the relationship of how long each segment is compared to each other. The one that doesn't belong is lower right hand here, where we have two tangents. We've already dealt with this situation uh, where you have two tangents uh, intersecting a circle, and the basic rule of thumb was that these two segments were equal in length. So we have to deal with these over here. These three cases where we have chords intersecting inside the circle, and intersections outside the circle with one tangent line or no tangent lines, or in other words, two secant lines. Moving right along, let's go to the first example. This is 1014. This is the only situation where you have an intersection inside the circle. Now, the way these algebraic expressions are come about is you can imagine that if you drew segment line segment AD and line segment CB, you'd make two sets of triangles with a vertical angle and you're most of the way to making a set of similar triangles. And if you had a set of similar triangles, you could then write a proportion equation. And once you had the proportion equation, you could then do cross products of that. And when you did cross products of that, you would end up with this expression right here, or this equation right here. And it's a pretty easy one to remember because you just have to walk along the line. So it's AE times EB set that equal to CE times ED. That'll be useful when you're solving equations. Next one, exterior intersection with two secant lines. And again, you can notice that if you were to draw a line right here and a draw a line right here, you would have something that looked an awful lot like a pair of similar triangles. And again, you could write a proportion equation. And again, you could cross multiply. And again, you would get a result of that. And it would look an awful lot like this. Now, the trick here is on this theorem and the next theorem, we don't talk about each individual segment. So we don't talk about EC and CD. We talk about the short segment and the entire segment. So EC 
times ED. So the short segment times the entire segment. Set that equal to the short segment times the entire segment. Like so. Next, 10.16. This time we have a tangent line. And the tangent line is kind of odd because we don't have a second portion of the segment over here. So it kind of follows that you should just multiply it by itself. Well, it doesn't really follow, but that's the way it happens if you were to set up a pair of triangles or whatever. Anyway, this is the resulting algebraic equation that happens from it. You take whatever the length of the tangent is, square it, set it equal to the short segment, and again, times the whole segment, not the longer segment or the chord inside the circle. Okay, next up, I have three example problems. And keep in mind that if you do a problem set or a test, that all these geometric drawings are going to be mixed in with each other. They're not going to be separated by theorems. So you need to be able to look at each one of these drawings and decide which one of these theorems you're in. First off, are you dealing with angle measurements? Then you're in a previous section. You're talking about theorems 10.10 .10 through 10.13. Okay. If you're talking about segment lengths, then you're going to talk about theorems 10.14 through 10.16. And then you have to get more specific. Is the intersection outside the circle? Is the intersection inside the circle? Is the intersection on the circle? Okay. So 1014 deals with the intersection being inside the circle with segment lengths. 1015, intersection outside the circle with segment lengths and two secant lines. Theorem 1016 talks about a tangent line and a secant line with the intersection outside the circle. Now, each one of these I am going to do, and I'm going to do them because really the only drama today should be setting up the initial equation. Solving it should be, be routine by now. It's either going to be a linear equation, and quadratics are totally on the table, so we can expect you to solve any sort of quadratic equation. So if you're a little rusty on that or didn't do so well on those algebra review worksheets, uh, now's the time to listen up. The first one we're going to deal with is this one. And this is 1015, and it deals with uh, intersection outside the circle and two secant lines. So what that says is take the short segment or this external segment, not necessarily shorter, um, multiply that by the entire length. So it is shorter than the entire length, but take the short segment or the external segment and multiply it by the entire length there. So three times the sum of all this. So it kind of gets messy. It's like three times itself plus a little bit. And set that equal to the external segment times the whole segment. So we have to add these together. When you do that, kind of a funky equation, but it looks like that. You just have a whole bunch of like terms to combine. Three plus two, and then distribute the three. And then here you have to combine the x's. The ones cancel each other out, which is kind of nice. So it does end up being pretty clean. Um, you end up with 2x being distributed. You get a 2x squared out of the deal. Once you get an x squared, you know that you're going to want to try to either factor, solve by square roots, or hopefully not, but maybe solve by quadratic formula. So best course of action is to get everything over to one side of the equation. And since we have a bx term, we are not going to be able to solve this by square roots. So we're going to do our best to factor that. It has an a term, which is a pain. But if you have any problems, you can do guess and check, you can do slide and divide, or you can do asterisk. Either way, you come up with that solution right there. Uh, 2x plus 5 times x minus 3. Then write your two little baby equations, solve each one of them, and you get solutions of negative 2.5 or 3. Remember, every time you have an x squared, you're going to produce two solutions. Now, it's always good to check your answers. Uh, this time we have a negative one and a positive one. You are very used to crossing off the negative one, but just double check to make sure you're crossing off the correct one. In this case, you would be correct again. But check out this 2.5. If you plugged in negative 2.5 right there, you would get a negative length, which is not allowed. So cross off the negative 2.5 and go with the 3. The next example here, I have a pair of chords intersecting inside the circle. And we are talking about theorem 10.14. Remember, 10.14 is the only one that talks about each individual segment. So just walk along the lines and multiply everything together. 
uh, x plus 2 times x plus 1, set that equal to x times x plus 4. That'll look like that. Distribute and FOIL on each side. That'll get you an x squared term on each side. Thankfully, it's exactly one x squared on each side, so they cancel out. How awesome is that? And it gets to be a linear equation that basically solves itself for you, x equals 2. Now the big one. This is theorem 10.16, and this deals with a tangent line and a secant line intersecting outside of a circle. And that theorem said, take the tangent line, square it, and set it equal to the external segment times the entire length. So if you set that up, it looks like that. Doesn't look too scary yet. Distribute that x, square the 16, get everything over onto one side. We have an x squared again, unfortunately. So you try to factor that, and you try to factor that, and you try to factor it, and it's just not working. So guess what? It's time to break out quadratic formula. So opposite of b plus or minus square root of b squared minus 4ac all over 2a. Set it up. It looks like that. Make sure that you carry this negative along with that 256 because otherwise you'll get a negative under the root. Remember, that's called the discriminant. Simplify. Under the root, you'll get 1,088. And if you were going for a decimal answer, you could go plus and minus that square root and do it all on the calculator. But let's try to be a little more sophisticated than that today and try to find perfect square factors of 1,088 because there's a big one in there, 64. 64 times 17 is 1,088. And that means that we can take the square root of 64 separately and pull an 8 on the outside of the radical. And then we can divide both the 8s by 2 to simplify a little bit. And we finally get that. But again, we have an x over here. And if I took negative 4 minus some number, I would get a negative number and I can't have a negative length. So the only solution must be the positive solution, negative 4 plus 4 times the square root of 17. I'm done for the day. I'll see you next time. There's the assignment and the details on how to do it perfectly.